Good morning, everybody. This is February 26 here in Montgomery County, Texas, here at the homestead. There's been a lot of updates since the last homestead preview. Uh, but let's talk about this weather for a minute. It's been in the 80s all week. All the trees are blooming. You would think it was April. And we still have another month to go before we even see April. It's February 26th. It's crazy. Um, so let's get on with this preview. So as far as my chickens go, I've updated to some Arshalops and uh, Carnation Sussex. I have two Brahma hens in there, but the rest are Arshalops and Carnation Sussex. <laughs> The chicken coop has been doing well. Uh, having a problem, and I don't know what causes it. The hens are laying eggs on the ground, but they're still laying eggs in there as well. And while we're on the subject of the rollout nest box, uh, on my rollout net, nest box uh, video, uh, I've had a couple requests to send photos and, and, and do an update on the nest box. So here we go. All right, so here it is. You'll see they get up on top of it, but they do not roost there at night. They'll get up there during the day. Um, I actually have a hen in this one. You can see her right there. And that one as well. So, the perfect no poop egg is not perfect. This was uh, this is three days worth of eggs, so I got to gather these. But most of them are pretty clean. Most of these eggs are clean. I got two hens. You can always see when the hens are laying because they always get right against the back edge. But you see how they roll out perfectly for easy access. So overall, I have no complaints about the function of this box. And um, I don't think it'll rot out. It's, uh, it's mostly under roof. The main thing is it's up in the air. And last but not least, I am still learning on video and I'm pretty crude at it. Matter of fact, I always thought adding music made it more interesting, but come to find out that maybe it's not. I got a lot of the natural sounds, the barking dogs and crowing chickens, roosters. <laughs> um, so with all those backgrounds, who needs music? <laughs> Thanks for the advice, guys. Appreciate it. Looks like my Thornless blackberries will do real well this spring. They're getting a kickstart here in February. But I'm sure we'll get another freeze, which will knock that back. So I've got my red potatoes all planted in this little side garden is what I call it. A real small garden area. So what I did not have here last time I did a uh, homestead video is turkeys. So I have added four turkeys. I've got two toms, two hens, and uh, they've only been home for a week, so they're still a little skittish. Waiting for them to get used to everything, get used to me. I don't know exactly what breed these are. I think they have Rio Grande blood in there. Genetics. I think their father is a Rio Grande Tom. I'm not sure what their mother is. So these Carnation Sussex, very beautiful chickens. This is one of my roosters. Normally you don't see the yellow, but I think that's from roosting under other chickens. 
So what wasn't here last time as well is my barn. And when we uh, fenced off the two acres on that side to build the barn and get it ready for the horse and the calf, you know, we had a lot of trees to cut down. So we've got a lot more splitting to do. You can see over in the background, a lot of wood before it goes to rot. A lot of cleanup around here to do. Uh, it's a mess right now. A lot of stuff out of place because of the construction of the building. But all this will be cleaned up soon. I hope, if I have the energy. But uh, the barn as well. It, we just moved in everything into it this week. And we have all this cross fencing now. I would like to introduce you to Cookie, but she's on the other side of the pond. built this turnout pen so we can pull her off the grass. When you have a small area to pasture animals, it's best to have a turnout pen. You can keep them in. And just feed them hay and feed to give you grass time to recover. Otherwise, a horse and a calf will turn this little two acre patch into nothing. It's probably less with the pond and the barn and the garden cut out of it. So let's get in the barn and see what we did there. So the only concrete in here is this little small room. It's 12 by 14. It goes in front of the horse stall. And we put mats down in there under the shavings. Cookie seems to love it. So I had the building insulated with a closed cell foam insulation so that it doesn't become a oven during the summer. And here, folks, we have a five-month-old, 330-pound, brangest steer. He's not real happy right now because he um, has been castrated this week, taken away from his mother out of a pasture for life. He's real scared. He just got brought home yesterday, and he has not settled down yet. He doesn't like us being near him. He's scared I'm gonna go in there and do something to him. So, hopefully by the time he gets up to 1,200 pounds, he's a lot calmer because that'd be a lot harder to take him to the process center. We wanna raise him up sort of like a show steer. Get him to where he's halter broke, walk him around. Hopefully that turns around here soon. Give it a couple weeks. So out here at the pond, we have a couple white ducks. I know they have a name, but I never think about what kind of ducks they are because it really don't matter much. One thing I've noticed the ducks are doing, the edge of the pond is just eroding from them digging into the edge with their bills. All that ledging is, and holes and all that's caused by these ducks. Otherwise, it'd be a smoother transition from the land to the water. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I've seen a lot less fish activity on top of the water since the ducks have taken over. And the pond seems to stay very silty, very murky.
So that that is the growth of my three acre homestead. Uh, I want to call it a residential homestead. Staying within the uh, HOA <laughs> guidelines is tough when you're running a homestead. Limited to how much livestock you have, but when you have little land, unless you really want to pay a lot of money for feed, and hey, it, it really, you'll just turn your ground into dirt if you get too many animals anyway. Uh, so that's the update, just Texas Prepping Homestead here. Uh, the growth we've made in just the past year is phenomenal. Uh, looking for it to slow down. So, hey, appreciate y'all's view. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you don't mind. It helps me out. Uh, so, see you next time.